I've lost my point. Um, anyway, yeah, there's a lot of things that I see now, knowing what I know, having been tortured for several years as a targeted individual, that when I look back in my life, they seem to explain some strange symptoms and things going on. So it appears to me that it is highly possible and also probable that I have been used in some sort of human experimentation for many years, if not from birth or possibly even before I was born. Um, I did recently meet my birth mother, excuse me, and, um, excuse me, she lives a, a pretty innocuous life. She lives in a small town by the ocean, and a very small house, has a son. But she told me that she was followed by people in unmarked cars and, you know, had some strange goings on for many years and didn't quite know what it was. Um, when I was born, supposedly she was very sick with toxemia, I believe. And uh, she said that when I was born, um, the doctors all made the space like, oh my God. Uh, and she said, what, what is it? And they said, oh, nothing, oh, nothing. Um, it turns out I was born with my umbilical cord tied in a knot, um, but also if you look at the structure of my skull, you can see very clearly uh, right here sort of an indentation that goes down uh, almost as if my head had been crushed or possibly opened when I was a youth. Um, the other thing that's weird is my birth mother told me that they would not let her sign the adoption papers. You know, the doctor kept her on the edge, like, are you sure you want it? Maybe you should think about it longer, and convinced her not to sign them until after four months. So I was in, in um, foster care as, as a neonatal, you know, as, a, as an infant for a little over four months before I was adopted. And that doesn't really mean anything to me, except that um, my previous girlfriend that I was with for many years, um, she was the victim of traumatic brain injury, and she had a seizure, di seizure disorder, excuse me, uh, as a result of this, and she opted to have um, brain surgery in order to help reduce the seizures. She had a uh, resectioning of the right temporal lobe, and also uh, removal of the right hippocampus, and um, the reason I mentioned this is because when they sewed her up and she was healing, it took approximately four to six months for her, now this is an adult, for her wounds to heal, you know, for the, the, the brain surgery to actually heal and the, the staples to come out, the screws to come out and stuff. So I think that possibly an infant who had brain surgery or, or skull surgery, facial surgery, would take about four four months or so. Anyway, um, what more can I tell you? Um, this is the big thing. Mind control is real. They have technology now that can read your thoughts, your inner dialogue, what you're thinking to yourself, and it can read it. Basically, the computer can read your inner dialogue faster than you can recognize what you're thinking to yourself. It can read that signal, transpose it into text, and send it to text messages on these gang stalkers' telephones around the same time as you are thinking it. Um, a lot of targeted individuals may ask, <coughs> excuse me, why is it they know where I'm going to go? How do they seem to know what I'm going to do before I do it? How come they're always there waiting for me when I get there? Um, those kind of questions. And for the longest time, I didn't believe that they had this technology. I was like the rest of you, no, it, it can't be. But uh, looking back over the experience, and, and I've analyzed this experience, everything that I can remember, over and over and over, every way I could look at it. Looking back at the experience, there are several concrete examples uh, where I was thinking something to myself and the people who were walking along, gang stuck, following me, would be talking about me uh, and they would mention, 
you know, what it was I had just thought. Um, there are several examples of it, and, and, you know, at first I was like, ah, it's just a coincidence, but then as I keep looking at it, you know, and I find more and more examples of it, it it's quite clear. The technology that they have um, allows them to see through your eyes. So basically, just like you're sitting at home looking at me on this YouTube video, um, you would be at the control room looking at what I see through my eyes, uh, or what you see through your eyes, and that's what they see on their screen. They can hear what you hear, they can possibly smell and taste what you smell and taste, I don't know. Um, but they can definitely see what you see and hear what you hear and read your inner dialogue, okay? That's the first thing. Uh, this is with remote neural connectivity. Um, I don't know whether it requires implantation of a bio nano device. That's a separate issue, and there's a lot to say about that. It's my belief that, that it does require this, um, and that's what I was exposed to a great deal of nanotechnology. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm, I get a panic attack whenever I think about this or talk about it. So um, We were exposed to a great deal of nanotechnology using strange insects as an infection vector. Um, and uh, it is my belief that, that some sort of self-replicating carbon nanotubules that can operate as a semiconductor, superconductor, and insulator uh, you know, goes into you and is small enough to snake through your veins, through the blood-brain barrier, and wrap itself around the neurons, possibly even replace sets of neurons. Um, but they definitely have full biometric reading, you know, your heart beat, your blood pressure, your emotional state, and your thoughts, your, what you can see and hear, and possibly full sensory, uh, virtual reality. Um, I believe that they can, or they're learning how to work with virtual reality, how to show you virtual reality, um, but I haven't seen too many, uh, I don't know, I don't, I haven't seen too much of it, uh, unless my delusion, you know, I, I don't know, I haven't seen too much of it. Uh, it does appear that, that people can piggyback on top of you, like, and almost to some degree using certain drugs and other electromagnetic technology, sort of push your consciousness to the side and attempt to control you. Um, anyway, um, the other thing that's very important to realize, and this is one of the main things, besides the, the fact that they can see what you see and, and read your inner dialogue. Excuse me, that same inner dialogue, that voice that you hear in, in your head when you're thinking to yourself, when you're talking to yourself in your head, that same voice can be, um, how do I put this? Sometimes your thoughts are not your own, okay? They can literally insert thoughts into your head I don't know how the process works other than this inner dialogue voice can be synthesized uh, using computers, of course. They will synthesize your voice. So it's either a computer or a human operator using your voice to speak into your mind in an inner dialogue, you know, in a running inner dialogue. Um, on top of that, they seem to be able to affect your emotional state uh, via entrainment, brainwave entrainment, or possibly even direct stimulation of those brain pathways that cause emotions via fine-tuned microwave interferometry um, and, and 